I have a a check killer. <laughs> curious way of exploring the times. So um, let's forget about it and do something else. <laughs> some words for which we do not have experience. And so it's rather curious that we still make judgments about it. So let me just ask you about something. Uh, I have a friend of mine, uh, very famous, Robinovich McGee, who's untitled. That's his name. And we had this problem. He went into a pub and he said, when the bartender asked him, what do you want to drink? He said, well, actually, um, just give me a glass. <laughs> and the bartender was rather curious and said, uh, giving him the glass. Why do you want the glass? I said, well, first of all, he said, before you put anything into it, I want to make sure it's empty. <laughs> and the bartender, therefore, being the agreeable sort of person, said, a heavy drinker. <laughs> <laughs> and would that prove it's empty? Mm. Heavy drinker. Like, mm -hmm. Robinovich McGee was, as you know, a scholar of some sorts, and he wanted to make sure it was what? Empty. empty. And therefore, what do you think you should do? The bartender should do to show it. Hold it upside down. Hold it upside down. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm glad you said that because I'm also good at drawing the glass upside down. All right. Therefore, would it not follow then to pass the test? You shook it and returned it. Therefore, it should be what? Empty. Empty. Should it not? Mm -hmm. Well, Jovinovich McGee is no fool. And he said, wait a minute. I don't mean to cause you any problems, but uh, there is some air in it. Yeah, there's some air in it. So, Bar time, he said, okay, he put a little lid on it. There it came out. So it was a vacuum. Now it's empty. Now it's empty. Joe Bidwich McGee was still upset. And he says, no, no, no. Because? He, he couldn't see in there. Hmm? He couldn't see inside of the glass. He still didn't think it was empty because there's electrons coming off the, the glass <laughs> a little bit uh, around the atoms. <laughs> so Some part. the bartender reached in and took one of the special brushes and brushed out those electrons. Now it's empty. Is that right? Now it's empty. 
Now, you see, this is where Dravidovich McGee, they had a lot of trouble with him because he said, no, no, you see, there's still, it's still, there's still some space there. Now, was he right? Well, then he'd want the space, space, space to get the hell out because he wanted it to really be empty. <laughs> agree? Being a purist? Yes. I, I agree. No. <laughs> so therefore, there is another puzzle that Dravidovich raised. He said, not only that, but when you look at it, if you're looking at it and seeing it, there must also be some light present in it. And being a purist, he didn't want a glass that wasn't empty. He wanted it to be truly empty. So what should the bartender then do? You can get help either way. <laughs> James him. says to give him a black hole. <laughs> Will it be a black hole? To give him one. Yeah, but nothing better get in it. <laughs> it attracts light, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Break the help? glass. What? Break the glass. You break, break, the break the glass. Break the glass. The bartender, you're going to break the glass in front of the bartender? Send <laughs> him next door. I give him a shot. Huh? <laughs> I broke Well, the bartender at this point got upset. And being an Irish bartender, he immediately he put his thumb, not finger. Right? Do you remember when someone told you that a thumb is not a finger? Yeah. Did you ever believe them? <laughs> never. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. I first got that. Okay. The bartender said, Dravidovich McGee, you're pulling my leg because you're confusing two ideas. You don't want the idea of empty. What you're talking about is nothing. And they're vastly different. How are they different? Look here, see, it's this problem that my good friend Melesius raised, you know? If this is time, it has to be continuous, you know, it has to be continuous. Because if there ever was nothing, and something can, cannot, certainly can't come out of nothing, if it's truly nothing, Therefore, if there ever was nothing, it would still be nothing, and nothing could ever emerge. <laughs> Agree? Yeah. Agree? Huh? Yeah, that's good, huh? <laughs> was that following? If there ever was nothing, would you agree if there's purely nothing, nothing can come out of it? <laughs> or is that empty? Or is that empty? Which word would be proper? Doesn't empty imply a vessel of some sort? Or? Whereas nothing implies nothing. Well, could Malicious be talking about nothingness or empty? Is there a difference between the two? Yeah. Is nothing like non-being of anything? Is that a difference or not? Well, see, if it's non-being, if you want to locate it in any way, theoretically, then it can't be nothing. When you say empty, that suggests there is a boundary, like a container. Listen, you're quite right. Where nothing doesn't suggest because, it. Yeah. Okay. 
empty means there must be a boundary within which you can say there is something. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Is there a difference between empty and nothing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, remember that books? St. Augustine said to that dude who came up to him and said, what was God doing before he created the universe? He said, creating a hell for guys like you who asked that goddamn question. It's <laughs> <laughs> huh? not a direct quote, by the way. <laughs> so if you look it up. It's something with that before. We're talking about the same thing. Pardon? If you suggested that something was that before, it implies that something was that before. This is not recording to my machine. This is recording to the drive. Interesting. That's what I checked. What do you say? I don't know. Either do I. You ask me. What is that? <laughs> if you reply that something was there before, wouldn't you say? You say it's empty, so that means something was there before. Empty implies that there was something there before. Empty implies that there was something there before. Okay, that's good. Okay? If empty means, that means that too. There must have been something before it. Now it is empty of that. Does the idea of nothing have that, or is that different? Different. <laughs> totally different. Then empty might be empty of. Right. But nothing doesn't have to be. To be. Is that right? The same yet? You ain't no example? I'm not saying it. Huh. I can't say anything about nothing. So, uh, is it not likely now we can ask whether or not any of you or your relatives have ever experienced nothing? I wouldn't know. <coughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> they better not describe it. Yeah, right. Or experience it. I tried that before. So I did a sum of pillars. Uh oh. What would follow? They'd be gone. They'd be gone. <laughs> yep. They wouldn't remember it. <laughs> they wouldn't remember it. There wouldn't be anything to remember. That's right. <laughs> now, therefore, it's not possible to experience it. Well, I don't say that. No. That's what I used to tell my mother. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> 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 Little liar. Got to be doing something. Now she is. No, doing nothing. <laughs> now she's doing something. <laughs> I had a mother, when you told her you were doing something, she'd say, that's nothing. Oh, her mother and my mother are friends. <laughs> my mother wanted me sure that I felt like nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. I got one more room. Okay, one my more mother room. felt like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was a maker. And he could make anything. So creative he was. Right? And so if you gave him something, whatever it is, he could make something of it. And his brother, not as skilled as he was, could take anything his brother made and he could copy it. And he had a younger brother, and he could never copy the older brother's work because it was too good, so he could only copy the work that his other brother made. <clears throat> yeah. That's curious, isn't it? Then, uh, in each creation, there must have been something missing. Is that right? Missing or added that wasn't in the original? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yes. All right? Okay. Then either something missing or added. Hmm. Oh, it's got another feature I forgot to tell you. Um, <laughs> now, don't laugh because this is a very special artist. He can make living things. And uh, when his brother makes a copy of the living things, it loses something, and so too it loses something as it proceeds. And the uh, most curious thing about this whole ladder process is that it doesn't go on infinitely, it stops. They run out of brothers. It's a curious thing. Or well, they don't need anyone else. Or, so it might possibly be yet the youngest brother is a dwarf. <laughs> and they make fun of him all the time because everything he does is very short for some reason. Yeah. He makes everything in his own image, so to speak. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, how can we describe this? Logical. Yeah. Well, I suppose we use mirrors here, right? That the first person then has an object, and the second person was able to perceive it, but only perceive it in a mirror. Right? He only has an image of it. And the next brother also perceives the image of this, but the only trouble is when he perceives an image of it, he didn't have any money, so he got, <laughs> he got a mirror that was uh, pretty chintzy. And, um, so therefore, the quality of the image he was trying to create would have to be less than the preceding one because of the very quality of the image that's being used. So there's a degradation in some sense. And uh, <clears throat> to make it worse now, just suppose for the moment that uh, this, this, this level stays just the way it is, continues. But this has the ability to uh, return and look at these prior products. But has to do something, of course, to see them because originally he didn't see them. So I just wanted to bring up a couple of puzzles before we got into two paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the descension. What's that? It's like the fall in the Bible. We come from pure light and it descends into matter and it's not any good anymore. No, I never read it. I didn't either, but that's what that yeah, says. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, which Bible was it? The third one. The third one. I knew I didn't get to the third one. So look here. All we need is a reader just to do Two paragraphs. So I thought we'd do post primers on page 106. And what's nice about the way this guy writes is that both paragraphs only have five lines. <coughs> right? Isn't that a good relief? <laughs> So we need a couple of readers, don't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, thank you. We're reading the post primals. 
Is that right? That's what he said. One of page 106. Well, yeah, the reason I was. Yeah, thank you. No, no, thank you. And from the beginning? I assume. For synopsis. If you want my rather ragged and shaggy. Okay. Mark's going to read. I'm just going to follow up. Oh, where? The post primals. I have another one somewhere. The one is everything and not everything. It is not everything because it is, because it is the source of everything. It is transcendentally everything because there everything is, or more exactly, is not yet, but is to be. Yet how can everything come from the one which is simple and apparently has within it no multiplicity or duality whatsoever? Everything can come from it precisely because there is no thing in it. In order that being be, the one must not be being, but being together. What's he saying? What's he saying about the one? It's rather curious in that second paragraph. We'll go to the first one in a moment. Second paragraph? 107? Yet, how can everything come from the one? Which is simple, and apparently has within it no multiplicity or duality whatsoever. Everything can come from it precisely because there is no thing in it. In order that, that being be, the one must not right, must be not being, but beings together. It cannot be, the one cannot be, it has to be beings together. something else that is. You say, excuse me, I want to find out the source of what is, if you don't mind. <laughs> when you're going to explain the source of what is? Oh, yeah. Did you say whatever is the source of it is? Yes. Well, then he didn't explain the source of what is. Agree? B. 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 Same thing. Hey, I would like to know the source of being. Oh, there's some other being. It's like, excuse me, I asked what is the source of being. Don't tell me it's yet another thing that exists or has being, because you were trying to explain to me the source of being. Well, then it can't be anything, can it? So therefore, it cannot itself be or exists, but it must be things together, what brought it into existence. Therefore, it can't be something that is or has being. Therefore, it must be nothing. The thing is something that is. Hmm. Hmm. Pierre, I have a question. That word begat, does that mean gave birth to, or does it mean like contributed the seed for? Hmm? One offer two, take both. <laughs> right. 
Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. What, is, what follows from you? I don't want both. That's my question. Which is it? Well, come on, what follows from each of your ideas? Well, I mean, begat as giving birth. No. Um, like, I think in the Bible, they say, you know, the genealogy, and they talk about, I think, men begat, begetting certain people. But men can't give birth. Only women can give birth. Really? Except for my uncle. Go ahead. So then I think begat must mean um, contribute to the seed for... Well, good for you. That was going to be my, my answer. So then the one contributes to beings... I should. No, it's not the you whole... You and I agree. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, we have to be right. Now we have to look for some other contributor. Oh, we have to be right? Okay. Well, at this point we are good. Okay. Right, okay, yeah. <clears throat> so what do you think of this rather curious paragraph? Please. What, what's the principle behind this that governs it, that says that the principle, there must be a principle behind this, um, that I'm assuming it's, it's a hierarchical universe, so anything that comes to be cannot come to be from something on its own level, so it must be from a level higher than itself. I mean, it sounds nice, but why can't we say... Um, yeah, this is what we're saying, isn't it? Each of these, there's a beginning on any one of these levels, right? but a difference on each level. And so you're asking, what is the principle that can best explain that? And uh, <clears throat> uh, For all that can be said to be cannot be derived or come from what is or what is said to be because it would still require something else to explain its existence as being. So it must be prior to being. for all that exists. If the thing that is the cause of something is different from its product, 
See, in that descent that we have, there's a difference as it proceeds downwards. And the problem is, it, the other side of it would be, if it could produce something as itself, it would be redundant, and therefore it would be a wasted effort since it already is. So therefore it has to be something other. And if it's something superior to itself, that would be rather foolish, because if it can make something more superior to itself, why didn't it do it to itself rather than make something else superior to itself? Therefore, not, not wanting to be foolish, on either of these points, there's only one alternative. That, of course, comes out of problems. So, um, <clears throat> he puts this whole thing in that very simple paragraph, doesn't it? Powerful, isn't it? And, uh, Everything comes from the one. There's no multiplicity. There's no duality in it. Whatsoever. Here it is. Everything can come from it precisely because there's no thing in it. In order that being be, the one must be not being, but beings be getter. Well then. got to be a difference, it's got to be a difference, and that's one big difference. But you can't say the one has any being, one doesn't exist. For if the one is supposed to explain something called being, it can't itself be being or you wouldn't be explaining the one. So the assumption here is, given this, the highest concept, necessarily this comes into play. Now this is rather curious. Uh, the whole metaphysics of Plotinus is in the next paragraph, but before we do that, let's look at the first paragraph. <coughs> Well, I'm in the vote. Okay. So. Well, it's comparing. So first we'll get a, a O'Brien, and then we'll go to Lowe. Sir, sir, go ahead. The one is everything and not everything. Hey, it's everything. Hey. Now look here. <coughs> it, is, it is not everything because it is the source of everything. Right. It's the source of it. Now watch the word source. Right. It is transcendently everything because there everything is. Or more exactly, is not yet, but is to be. So would you agree? Would you agree? If someone were to ask you to do something bold like, could you please go out and bring something? You could do that, could you not? Yeah. Could you not? 
By the way, whatever you bring, would it be one? Each of the things you bring would be one? So if someone just had to merely say to you, why don't you out, go out and get a bunch of ones? <coughs> Could they not? No. For everything is? One. 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 Hey, here's another puzzle, see? Would you agree that no one has ever experienced this? Because of the nature of experience, or because of the nature? I don't know. I just wonder if I one. get an agreement from you. <laughs> no. No. Oh, let me do that again. Oh, I thought I'd get an agreement. Oh, by the way, is this one? That's uh, one piece Eight. of chalk. <laughs> Made up of parts. Made up of parts. Oh, okay. it's a hole. It's a hole. Yeah. By the way, when you experience this by sight, you only see certain parts of the hole. Yes. So, in that respect, you don't see the hole of this truck. True. By perception. True. But we might turn it around. <laughs> I'd still have the same problem. You'd still have the same problem, right? Yeah. So, in terms of sight. We only see the surface of things that is in our vision. Okay. Agree? Mm -hmm. So then no one sees the whole of something. How about if it's trans somewhat transparent? Then would you see the back of it? And the front of it? But look here. Try this. <laughs> Try this. Unity. Whole. Part. Hmm. When someone says they experience one, whatever it is, is that an inference they're making on the basis of what they experience, which are, in terms of vision, only parts, and they infer a whole, <coughs> and the parts have a certain capacity to remain together, we call it a unity? Mm -hmm. But do we experience a unity? Or do we infer a unity from a whole of things in the way in which the parts maintain themselves? The second. The second. So it's a thinking game. When someone says, I have unity. Oh. But how about one? Do they see one? No. Or is one higher than unity? Higher than unity. Higher, higher than unity. Because the unity would be A1. <coughs> well then, all anybody experiences is on the lower level, and somehow, by being brought into discursive reasoning, all they then talk about is each thing being A1. Yet that one we don't experience, we infer, right? But are we inferring unity or one? Unity. 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 Ha! One is trans. Well, then no one experiences one. <laughs> this well, is very they, dangerous. They experience a oneness. Pardon me. If they experience oneness, wouldn't that mean they clearly have the idea of one and they know the quality of one? Yeah. Well, where do they get the idea of one if they never experienced it? How could they get a quality of something upon which they never had an experience of the thing in which it is a quality? They were born with it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> from from their powers. begetter. Yeah, their begetter. No, it's, a, it's the same riddle, isn't it? Yeah. So if you say one nest. Right? Right, Tony? You were, I interrupted you. No, I was just thinking about a car saying you work on cars. You understand the engine and the transmission and, you know, the diaphragm, all everything to do with the car. So, I mean, you have experience in it, but yet you know it's all one car. So, yeah, I mean, you, in that sense, yeah wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, that's quite true. We're sure it's a car. 
Yeah, but you know but, all the other parts exist but, too. But did they experience the one car? What did they? The whole of what they, the parts that they, do they then make a judgment? Do they, are these higher judgments more embrace it as it proceeds higher? I don't know, I experience other parts of cars where I'm riding in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? okay. I mean, really, I'll be thinking about, oh, I hear the transmission, I feel this here. Yeah, so I have more other experiences than just the car. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more than it gets that. I'm not sure. I'm glad you used that example because I'm so stupid. <laughs> when does someone say, I see the one car? Or do they see visually certain parts of it? I think it's the whole. And then they kind of <coughs> hold on to those parts and say, well, I get around the other side. I gotta... yeah, the idea of just so they have to start using their mind to get to the idea of whole. Right. <coughs> and if they understand how the parts fit together, it's yeah, a higher level of reflection and experience. Yeah, I think. Oh. But it could be missing a bumper or something. <laughs> 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 you know <what> I mean? <laughs> no. So would you agree, the first paragraph gives us a curious insight. Because it looks like we're saying maybe you don't experience either one or nothing. Yet we use it in a variety of ways that suggests we know what we're talking about. But maybe we never had any experience of those things, we really don't know what it would be. <coughs> Now, there's a guy who wrote an interesting paper, and he said, you know what's interesting about nothing is that means, like in an automobile or a human body, you only know it's, you only experience in its presence when something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. If everything is going smoothly, you're not aware of either. Uh-oh. Well, then the idea of nothing can be said to take on a much more interesting value. That is to say, when everything is functioning ideally, then the whole system is in harmony, and you don't experience anything. That is a, like a state of perfection comes in. Perfect, right? No bother, no bother. Oh. Perfectly balanced, right? Positive, negative, right in the middle. Nothing. Mm. Nothing too much. Nothing too less. No, right, right where it belongs. <clears throat> That's the Taoist understanding of nothing. Perfect harmony. So, now we do the whole metaphysics of Plotinus in one paragraph. Third one. <clears throat> Let's get a reader and jump in. You good for it? Sure. Thank you. This, then, it may be said, is the primal begetting. Perfect. Seeking nothing, having nothing, needing nothing. The one overflows and its excess begets an other than itself. Begotten turns back towards begetter and is filled and co becomes its contemplator, the intelligence. Its abiding with the one constitutes its being. Its contemplating the one constitutes its being intelligence because it abides with the one in order to see. It becomes at one and the same time intelligence and being. Notice the language he's using. Now, um, 
it's back to those. So, if there is such a thing as a pure nothing, you know what? It must be there. It could possibly we use the Taoist grasp of it, which is it's uh, a perfect state. Well, he's saying there is a, the image he has is there is a overflow, right? There's a, a flowing. This is the beginning being. Not yet. Not yet. It's much more fun. Watch. This then, it may be said, is the primal beginning. Perfect. Seeking nothing. Having nothing, needing nothing, the one overflows, and its excess begets an other than itself. Begotten, it turns back towards the begetter. See, it turns back towards the begetter. Here's the moment. Everything is right here. Right? Here's the moment. Turns back. To its source. Hey, it's filled. It's filled. <whistles> Bang. At that moment, it's turning about to its source. That's the contemplation. It's contemplating. Watch the contemplator at that moment, sir. You look at this, sir. And becomes its contemplator. Hey. It's aware of something. Ah! Intelligence. It's aware of something, being. At that moment, right, it's contemplating its source. At that moment, it's contemplating, ah, intelligence. Oh, and it's contemplating its source, being. Thus, comes into existence, intelligence. And being. Because the overflow then returns to itself, encounters itself, and in that moment it must be aware of its act. Must be aware of what it is it encounters. It encounters. the birth of intelligence. And since it's aware of its act, it knows then, it knows then, it's aware of its act as a seeing that is. Therefore, <coughs> being now is in existence. The intelligence, its abiding with the one, constitutes its being. That's right. It's contemplating the one constitutes its being intelligence. Because it abides with the one in order to see. 
It becomes at one and the same time intelligence and being. See, Propolis comes along and he says, you know what? This is right. By the way, that's a lot of... Uh, Life, vitality, he adds, right to that, right? because it takes power and right, activity. But for Plotinus at this point, that's all he needs. Um, now, we've only got one step. Now we need the next step. Right. Therefore, might as well read the next paragraph. Right? What do you think? Oh, Barbara, you were going to check the other translation. What do you say? Uh, it, uh, it's it has some differences. You want to hear it? Anything that you'd like, please? Um. Well, in this translation, I'm not sure how yours has it, but it says this: when it has come into being turned back upon the one and is filled and becomes intellect by looking towards it. Its halt and turning towards the one constitutes being. It stays upon it stays upon the one intellect. No. I thought that was interesting. No. No. And a little different. Is that right? Yes, because he's focusing that translation is focusing on the seeing mm -hmm. and that means at that moment there's birth of intellect. Mm -hmm. Or you can talk about, now that there is this intellect, what is it it is intellecting? That's intelligence. Right. So one is going towards, at that moment, there must be a seeing, primary seeing. Intellect is born. With the consequence of it, intelligence. Well, does the, does the Orion... The question I had, too, was about the idea that it's in the halt, that it's in the... the right? Uh, it overflows... And its halt and turning towards the one mm -hmm. constitutes being, mm -hmm. right? That's like the hypostasis, right? Mm -hmm. The stopping of, like, instead of just going out and going out and going out and going out, it stops and turns back, right? Does the O'Brien does that? Do you do well, that? you see, if he's focusing on the turning, that's different than this moment. The right. result of the turning. Right. That's the result of the turning. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're back in Osea. That's your seal. That's yeah. right. That's right. The whole thing yeah, is yeah. revolving yeah. around this for the last. So that's the only difference. Yeah, as the mm. Chinese say, right on, right on, man. I, I, I can't see it. It's any Cantonese other difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. And the only other difference is he says it's the principle of all things rather than source, which is kind of a okay. Uh, principle. You know, I I can't see that they do uh, do much else. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, the same thing is going to take place with this. Right? Same thing. That is an ancient principle. What is it? Relations are constant. The terms may change. Right? So now, just as the one had this overflowing and turning about, now what we're calling intelligence. Now also, what does it do? The same thing. But it must be in a lesser degree. Each se sequential step. Mm -hmm. Image of the one. It's the intelligence. It's got an image. Use the word image. Intelligence produces as does the one. With, like its prior, a mighty show of strength. This activity is the soul welling up from being. The intelligence, the while remaining unchanged, quite as its prior, the one remained unchanged. Right? So out of this welling up from intelligence is therefore soul. Therefore, this is the image of this, this is the image of this, 
Each image, however, loses a certain capacity as it proceeds down. But the soul doesn't remain unchanged in begetting its image. It's altered. Contemplating its source, it's filled and goes out. Emotion different in kind and in direction. And begets its own image. Sense, vegetable principle, or nature. Now he's going to collapse them all, and he says, by the way, even though we present this spatially, any one of these is not separated from its prior, therefore it may have this kind of image. That there's always a part which always is still attached to its prior. Or um, well, um, what we need is a um, sequences like this, inclusive. Yet, in some sense, separate. But this is going to be the lowest, and the most inclusive is, of course, the one. But that's the point he's making. One whole paragraph, one sentence. However, nothing is separated from what it's from its prior. This whole system is in that sentence. Therefore, we, here we are, We're not separated from intelligence. Therefore, his whole game is going to be, if we're not separated from it, how come we're so stupid? <laughs> what do you have to do to see what you're already part of? This whole set, the whole structure is in that one sentence. So, however, nothing is separated from what is prior. Well, if that's the case, how come we don't access it? The, the souls going out seems to extend even to the vegetable level. In one sense, it does not extend that far for the life of growing things as its providence. But it does not go out wholly onto the level of vegetation. It is there solely in the sense that in going so low by this abasement and desire for what is base, it is the producer of an existent <coughs> other. It's higher for it, its own intelligence, continues an untroubled self-possession. So, just hold it there. <coughs> because even in nature, there's... Uh, there's reason, natural reason, akin to nature. There's order. So there's, the, there's connection, it runs through them. And each one of these things, whatever you want to call it, is still one. <coughs> Oneness. Um, so he's got a good game going. Should we go on to section two? We're doing a lot in one night. How can some? How can the one which is limitless overflow? Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. How do you explain it? That's right. <coughs> and there are other ways. Other ways. <coughs> other people try to describe that. But that's the, that's the fundamental issue. And it's also in uh, uh, other systems.
Now this is called the king. This is called the queen. And uh, this is a generative model. This is a generative model. Therefore, this too is a king, and this is its queen. This is generative. This is generative. Now, you know, all of all of this philosophy that you guys are into comes out of this. Someone comes along, and they experience this brilliant light of being, and they go, "Wow." Now, what the hell has this got to do with it? Now, what's the everyday world got to do with it? I have this great experience. How can I relate my everyday world to this experience? That's the divine luminosity. Okay. Therefore, you get the Bhagavad Gita, other books like that. Wait a minute. Someone else comes along and says, Hey, I just have one question for you. Um, would you say anything that is must have a cause? Yes. Oh. Well, then, this brilliant light of being must have a cause. Now, this is very, very upsetting to people who have this experience. Because they think it's ultimate. And they're right. It is an ultimate experience. But there is something that is not an experience. The one of the good. And therefore, someone comes along and says, By the way, I've been here too. Now they got themselves two problems. Right? Like, how come this exists in the everyday world? Well, that's an ultimate experience. Wait a minute. This is far beyond it. Now, how am I going to deal with my everyday world? I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to do something. How is it related? So, someone says, I got news for you. 
if there can't be anything greater than this in terms of luminosity, then among things that are most luminous, this is vastly more than all of these other things that are luminous. Here comes the, here comes the sneaky tip, here comes the step. Therefore, it must be its cause. Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough one, sir. <laughs> because many people in the history of philosophy and religion, they have this, but they don't see its connection with this. Plato was saying, this is the cause of this. And that's remarkable. Hey, that's a remarkable step. They have this experience, they scratch their head and they say, wow, man, that was great. Someone along comes along and says, yeah, by the way, do you happen to notice something? No. It's the cause of the sun. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> if this is true. Hmm. Same thing over here now. So all philosophy and metaphysics is trying to make sense of these two guys. Now, the Chinese are saying, hey, you know what? Yep. Say that this is intelligence. Being. Overflow, and we go, oh man, I love fl <laughs> flowers and nature and waterfalls and overflowing. <laughs> but it doesn't, what does? Right, what does? So all of these wizards and, we, and con contemplators and philosophers, it's their task. They've got to say, hey, you know what? There's only one problem in this whole mess. <laughs> when this dude experienced this, he said, you know what? It really ain't different than myself. And his buddy comes along and says, ah, has no pockets. <laughs> But if they ain't got pockets, you can't put anything not in like me. So his buddy says, you know what, take another look. At that moment, did you somehow say that there's no difference you're seeing mind? Is it intelligible too? Not just brilliant? Uh-oh worse now. That means you should be able to put it into an intellectual system if in fact you're dealing with the nature of mind. So these guys are going to have to play with these ideas to try to make it fit into a beautiful system. So now Plot Plotinus, from this point on, everything he's doing is to try to get you, right, to this experience. Primarily, he's a yogi, he's a philosophical yogi. that's his thing. Not to make it into a beautiful intellectual structure like Proclus does. And it's all over that one word, overflow. What words can you use to explain it? And how can you devise some kind of intellectual yoga that can open you up to this? And then the, the guy is going to go, hey, and then you know what? Let's <laughs> go the next step. <clears throat> and at that point, Plotinus is beyond uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Because they don't do it. Right? And works <coughs> like that. So it's a fun book. And it's paperback. <laughs> You. Right. Say if we wasted our time just one day. <laughs> <laughs> right.
Okay, I have a couple of announcements. Oh, um, boy. Thank you. Overflow. First one first. Oh, there's an overflow of beer from last week. There's an overflow of beer. Thank you. And uh, maybe after you've had one, you'll give me a donation for the... Even before <laughs> having one. Okay. You need paper money? Or you, if you just want to give it to me sober, that's okay, too. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre, you're not paying. No, no, no. You're not no, paying, no. Pierre. You're not. Um, Wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <don't laughs> he took his money anyway. He took his money anyway. No, he's saying it. He didn't bring it. Yeah.